Welcome back to Piers Sequel Mao and to another Quick Tip Tuesday. I know, it's been a week already. It's gone so fast. It turns out I'm a vlogger now as well, by the way. So I have a vlog called A Week in the Life of a Small YouTuber. It's like a 700 subscribers special that I did. Uh, that I filmed all last week, so that'll be up on the channel very soon. But today I've got another really, really strong tip for you for the second ever Quick Tip Tuesday, and it's how to create this really cool, really eye-catching, blown away effect with your mobile phone. So as well as your phone, you're gonna need a couple of other things to create this effect. You're gonna need a tripod to keep your phone perfectly still. You're gonna need an umbrella to help sell the effect. You're gonna need a ladder for the person being blown away to stand on and you're gonna need two willing models. Now this is gonna be a do as I say, not as I do type of tutorial because I actually make a lot of the common mistakes you can make when creating this effect so I can show you how to fix them. The location, now the location is actually really important, more important than it might seem on the surface. You're gonna want somewhere quite open, somewhere not too busy so your models can stand out. Now in this example, I've chosen somewhere that's open but a little bit too busy in the background. Your location is also really important from a lighting perspective. Now you're gonna be taking multiple photos and you don't want the lighting changing between shots. If in one shot you've got direct sunlight creating harsh shadows and in the next shot the sun went behind the cloud, then it's gonna be really difficult to merge the two together and the final image just isn't gonna look right. Once you've found your suitable location and you're ready to take the picture, fix your phone on your tripod and make sure it doesn't move. Again, we're gonna be taking multiple photos. So if it moves between the shots, you're gonna make life a lot more difficult for yourself. Now you can do this with the built-in camera app that comes with the iPhone, but I would recommend investing in a third party camera app. So you can dial in your settings and fix them in place. So your pictures look the same between your shots. Now you'll see that my settings change between shots and my lighting also changes. So you'll see the problems that causes and how to fix them your models. So with your models, it's really important that the person on the top of the ladder in the elevated position, obviously safety first, is selling, really, really selling this blown away situation. So I usually have them looking like euphoric that they're flying or scared that they're being blown away, something like that. In my examples, my brother opted for a look of blissful enjoyment as he got blown away. And it's also important that the person on the ground is selling the situation as well. Have them look, again, scared, euphoric, something appropriate for the situation. And finally, two other really important things. Make sure the person on the ladder, again, safety first, is on their tiptoes. If they're flat footed, even if you get everything else right, if their foot is flat, then the illusion's just not gonna look right. And the second thing is make sure that no body parts, no legs or feet or anything like that are being hidden by parts of the ladder. You'll see again in my examples, both of these things didn't happen. I have body parts being hidden by the ladder and my brother is flat footed. So again, I'm gonna show you how you can work around those, but you can't always rely on fixing it in post. The most important thing is to get it right in the camera. Once everyone's ready, focus on the models and lock the focus in place. Take a picture of the models doing the pose and then once you're happy with the picture, ask them to clear the frame completely. Again, don't touch your focus, don't touch your settings and take another photo of just the empty background. And this is called a clean plate. As you can see, my examples contain very, very little of the advice I've actually given you today. I think my examples contain only one of the points that I've actually given you today. So let's head over to Affinity Photo on the iPad and see if I can fix them. So here we are in Affinity Photo and you don't need to use Affinity Photo for this. You just need an app that lets you work with layers and has masking or erasing capabilities. So you can use Photoshop if you like, or you could even keep the entire process on your mobile device with an app like Photoshop Fix. So I've made a blown away album in my camera roll. These are just JPEG pictures. These aren't raw files or anything fancy like that. So I've actually opened the wrong file first, but that's fine. Kind of the story of this video, me doing things wrong and then showing you how to fix it. So with your photo open in Affinity Photo, ideally you have the, the other picture, the, the clean plate open, but that's fine. Let's go on place. Let's tap these three dots up here on the top. You can tap place and then place from wherever your photo happens to be. Mine is in my blown away album. And then we can tap the clean plate. So 
So Affinity Photo will not just place your picture straight in, well, that would be too easy. You have to drag, so uh, we have to line this up now perfectly, which, you know, is um, it's really important. So if we zoom in, we can get, if we look at the dimensions of the picture, that can help us. That's very, very close to four by three, so I'm happy with that. And then we can line up the edges. And then what we can do to make sure it's perfectly aligned is we can just turn it off and on. So you can see my camera actually moved in between the photos quite a lot. Never mind. So we can come onto the layer and let's just rearrange these layers by just dragging this underneath. And then we can tap these three dots, tap opacity and just bring it down and then tap the little arrow over here Tap the, tap the mouse pointer over here, which is the move tool, and then just align your photos. So again, you can zoom in to help you. So I'm, I'm happy with that. Let's see what the overall image looks like now. And you can see from the outline, the image, just how much the camera actually moved. In real life, it's nothing, but it does make a big difference in the photo. But we're still moving forward. So what we can do now, we can come up to the layers panel, make sure that this top layer is selected. And then we can press this plus here and then tap mask. So the mask is gonna be made. It's gonna be a white mask. And then tap the brush tool, make sure that the color is black. So I've just realized my Apple Pencil's not working. You can hear me tapping on the screen. It's not, it's not responding. So I'm gonna carry on with my fingers. So. Let's paint out this ladder over here. And you can see now the importance of having the, the background and uh, the clean plate and the picture you actually took match up. Because if you don't, you just make it harder for yourself. Look how much lighter this, this background is and it'll be it'll all be the same here. Those railings are lighter. Now you can see I've also cut a bit of his foot off with the ladder and he's flat footed like I said and if I was to just erase this ladder here and leave that foot as is it looks like he's he's obviously not but it looks like his foot is resting on that railing at the back and something doesn't look right so I'm going to mask out the foot as well I'm going to bring actually over this foot over here in a minute using Affinity's selection tool and again you don't have to do all these things only if you make a mistake while you're shooting. So I don't think that you have to get an app which is which has great selection uh, tools and you have to learn how to make selections. You don't. You just get it right in the camera so you can avoid doing all this. So obviously I don't want to mask out the rest of Mike. It's hard with the finger though. There we go. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I'm gonna get my selection. I'm gonna go over to the selection persona, tap this quick selection, uh, smart selection even. And thankfully Affinity smart selection is actually one of the best things about it. Make sure that the, the layer is actually selected. It makes it easier. And you can just tap the foot. Now it's selected a few things I don't want. That's fine. The, where Affinity falls down is it makes sometimes very simple things very difficult or even almost impossible. So here I just want to output this selection as a layer. Now there are ways to do it. I can come up here and there's a few tools like you go to the photos persona and you copy it and then you paste it. It's it's just it's just a pain. So in the selections persona I'm just going to go to refine the selection and then I'm just going to go to output as new layer so it's turned the layer off the this was taken from and while it's off I'm just going to use the eraser or you can mask it as well it doesn't really matter if you want to go completely non-destructive you can just add a mask to this layer and then continue just masking out these bits that the refine edges selected Again, this can all be avoided. We're editing at the pixel level. 
which always helps when you uh, that you can zoom in this far when you're not using Apple Pencil. So I'm masking out everything that Affinity has included. The fact that Mike's wearing black shoes here is a massive benefit with no detail, so it's makes it, it doesn't make it so obvious. So what we can do now is turn this layer back on, press the move tool and then bring his new foot over here. And we're gonna just rotate it ever so slightly and just try and line it up. And I, I don't want it here, I want it in between this railing and the floor to show that there is air between it. And now we can tackle the background. Let's just come over here, add a brightness and contrast adjustment layer. Now we just we only want the brightness and contrast to affect this layer here, so we can just drag it over and then we can just bring the brightness up. And you can see, even after I brought the brightness up, you can see the white balance is not perfect. Now it's obvious to us because we're close to the image. We've been we've seen this image right from the very beginning. So that very subtle uh, change in tones from here to here is more obvious to us. But if you were to just look at this picture for the first time, there wouldn't be anything noticeably different about it. And that is the second Quick Tip Tuesday in the bag. Now let me know in the comments if you're enjoying these Quick Tip Tuesdays, if you have any questions or suggestions for a future Quick Tip Tuesday. And once again, thank you so much for watching. Take care, stay curious, and Aussie Buna. And finally, two other... And finally...